no education. How did he get out of the pit and develop these steam trains that changed the world forever and for the better? Now, here's a question for you. George Stevenson, the father of the railways, he who invented the first passenger railway line 200 years ago, we're celebrating it this year in 2025, couldn't read or write until he was 18 years old. So how did a boy with no education whatsoever work through the ranks, develop the steam train, the first passenger pulling steam train, locomotion number one, not just develop it, but actually build it and drive it on that day when the world witnessed the first passengers being pulled at 15 miles an hour, That's great speed at the time, 450 passengers in, in open cars and 18 local dignitaries in a closed car. It happened actually not far from where I am right now, just about 20 miles away. Now, 15 miles an hour might not sound very fast to you today, but in 1825, that was pretty speedy, bearing in mind that a horse and carriage traveling from, say, Darlington, the Stockton Darlington Railway Line, from Darlington Station to York would travel at around five miles an hour. And there were people at the time terribly worried about the effect on the human body traveling at such speed. And when trains were traveling at 30 and 50 miles an hour, people were absolutely certain that bodies were going to implode in upon themselves and of course the train speeds rapidly increased and they could touch a hundred miles an hour by 1900. How did George Stevenson, the pit lad, in other words the lad that went down the coal mine just outside of Newcastle at the age of 10 or 12 with no education, how did he get out of the pit and developed these steam trains that changed the world forever and for the better. This is the British Industrial Revolution and some of the biggest characters you will ever read about during this revolution. And by the way, it is indeed a very good revolution. I, I did something recently and talked about the, the English-British Industrial Revolution and someone went mad at me saying, you can blame the Industrial Revolution for climate change and all the calamities and all the terrible things that are happening in the world. Codswallop, I said to him. I said, if it wasn't for the Industrial Revolution, you would not be able to send me this email. Anyway, that's an aside. George Stevenson, Geordie Stevenson, born in Newcastle in the 18th century. His father was a miner. His mother couldn't work. She was too poorly. Lots of siblings. They couldn't afford to send George or the siblings to school. Barely anybody could then. The free schooling didn't come about until much later on, post uh, the, the George Stevens time, but 1870. As a direct result of the Industrial Revolution, free school education in around 1870. Interestingly, actually again, just another aside, even though education did become free from around 1870 for all children, in Britain and then around the empire, I suppose. A lot of parents didn't want to send the kids to school because they were so reliant on their children working in the factories and elsewhere, from road sweeping to mills to mines, to down, down the pit, that they needed the money from the kids. So it took quite a long time for the British government to coerce parents to allow their children to go to school. Now, Geordie Stevenson, going back in time, would have loved to have gone to school because he was obviously as bright as a button. And, but what happened is he went down the pit, followed his father, and it was soon discovered that George Stevenson could fix stuff. He was a good repairman. He would take the boots from the miners with holes in, take them home and fix them. He could fix clocks. And it was soon discovered by the mine owners that little Geordie Stevenson was a dab hand at fixing the machines. Those steam powered machines that pumped air into the mine to keep the miners alive and pumped water out of the mine to stop the mine from flooding. Geordie Stevenson could fix those machines. More than that, he was very good, they discovered, at improving the machines. And he soon came up with these great ideas to not just have the machines fix static, but actually move the machines, move coal. It had been done before, but Geordie Stevenson did it 
better. And this was the great thing about the British system. I think the British system was more of a meritocracy. This might be a bit contentious. A meritocracy in the late 18th, early 19th century than it is today. Because the British system, the British Empire, the, the um, Industrial Revolution, couldn't give a monkey's where you came from, what your background was. But if you had skill, tenacity, you were brave and a gumption and a fantastic work ethic that would improve your life and everybody else's. The system didn't care that you couldn't read or write. It didn't care that you came from a poverty-stricken family. It said, right, let's take your skills and let's utilise them for the good of all. And this is what happened to Geordie Stevenson. It wasn't until he was about 18 when he left the mine and he was working above ground, fixing his machines and making relatively good money that he put himself through night class to learn to read and write. But that was about as far as it went. He soon went into business, starting making locomotions. And yes, George Stevenson drove the world's very first passenger pulling loco, locomotion number one, which he designed and built. He drove it himself from Stockton to Darlington just down the road and changed the world forever. No education. Now, if he doesn't make you proud to be British, I don't know what does.